Good morning. I hope you're all well. How's Christmas treating you? I did see a lot of you had commented on the other video. I do apologize if I didn't get back to a lot of you. Obviously, it's been a busy, busy couple of days. And over the next few days, I will be going back into comments and commenting. But today... It's all about getting into the meat and potatoes. I'm aware that it is still the Christmas period and a lot of you are busy, so we're going to get straight into it today. And it's about really the experiences of the parents in the student Idaho murder case. Because it would appear that they are having very different experiences. And is the fact that they are having these different experiences telling us anything is it telling us about who the police may feel the target was um who perhaps played a part in being the catalyst for what happened who knows but something sits quite uncomfortable with me and, and again this is complete and utter speculation but there does seem to be such a massive massive difference we've obviously seen Kaylee Gonsalves' family, her father in particular, being very, very vocal about the fact that he is very, very unhappy with the way that this case is being handled, to the point where he himself has employed the services of a personal private investigator. Now that goes, you know, it goes to show that he kind of doesn't have the faith that he should in law enforcement and when you've listened to what he said it's seemingly because he feels that law enforcement are keeping him in the dark they're not giving him information he has gone as far as saying they need to grow some balls and deal with some certain things and give some information out that alludes to the fact that perhaps gonsalves has some information that he feels law enforcement should be telling the public but is not doing so. And there seems to be a strange undertone there where we've gone down the route of thinking that perhaps certain factions around here are being protected by law enforcement. Perhaps with the fact that this is an area that is propped up by the education system that they feel that rocking the boat may affect the monetary situation in Moscow, Idaho. But let's have a look at what I mean by very different situations. I'm going to take your attention to this. Now, again, like I said, we've heard a lot from Kaylee Gonsalves' dad. But up to now, we haven't heard a lot from the counterpart, which was Madison's parents. And I say counterpart because I think it's been since the very beginning of this case, people have felt that these two girls were the primary targets, or at least one of them, and the, and the perpetrator of this potentially ventured to these girls first. So what we're saying is Ben Mogan, father of Slane University of Idaho student Madison Mogan, said he is confident that whoever is responsible for the stabbing death of his daughter and her friends, Kaylee Gonsalves, Zana Canodal, and Ethan Chapin, will be caught and brought to justice. Speaking to the Spokesman Review newspaper, Mogan explained that for a crime like this, it would just be too difficult for the perpetrator to evade detection. From the very beginning, I've known that people don't get away with these things these days, Mogan told the outlet. Um, there's too many things that you can get caught up on, like DNA and videos everywhere. This is something that people get away with that goes... This isn't something, sorry, that people get away with that goes unsolved. At the t same time, Mogan is frustrated that six weeks into the investigation of the November 13th killings, 
of the four students at an off-campus apartment, there is still so much that remains unknown. So he's showing that there is some frustration there because there is things that are unknown, but we'll come back to that in a second. There were so many questions that I figured would be answered and we're still waiting, he said. Bogan said investigators have been touch, been in touch with him every day to provide updates. If he goes multiple days without answering their calls, the lead investigator calls his family to check up on him, he said. State investigators have been getting outside help, including from the FBI, Mogan said. Um, that all of those resources, they should be able to solve the case. Um, I just have to know that they know what they're doing, and if they don't, then they know someone that does. And I think this goes on to say that, or I read it, that obviously this is a stark difference to what you hear Kaylee's dad saying. Now, don't get me wrong, there are hints in there that there is frustration because there's unanswered questions, but the overall t tone is a lot more positivity and a lot more confidence in the system to provide answers. And again, you wonder why that is. Why are these two parents having such a different experience throughout this horrific ordeal? Why would one of the parents be feeling that law enforcement are failing and another parent feel that they are doing everything in their power to get to the bottom of it, and they are confident that even if they personally don't, that they have the resources to do so. Is that just that? I don't. I don't know. I. Ju I don't know. I just feel that in a situation like this, they should be having the same experience. Yes, they'll have different feelings themselves about what their expectations are perhaps and maybe that is just about the families managing their own expectations of what to consider but i just it's it's interesting it, it's very interesting when one of the parents is saying look this is something that you don't get away with you know there's there's videos everywhere and i wonder what made him say that comment you know is it that law enforcement have told him, look, that there is footage they were caught on camera. Um, we've not yet seen camera footage from inside the corner club. Um, there's been a lot of questions as to why that is. Uh, maybe because they know that there'd be a shitstorm online, perhaps. There's a lot going on in this case still. Um, are they going to get answers it's, it's scary because we're six weeks down the track. And I think being six weeks down the track and still being in this position, it may tell us other things. And I'm going to do that in a, another video later on today. So keep your eyes peeled for that. I just don't want to make this video too long. I know this is a busy, busy period for you guys. But what are your thoughts? Let me know down below. Why would these parents be having such a different experience during this case is it simply because of their own expectations or is law enforcement treating them differently because they feel different we know law enforcement they can take things very very personally do they feel that one of these victims was indeed the primary target and they're aware of the reason that that could have potentially been and they're upset and frustrated that this spilled out and there was some victims that sadly became collateral damage of this one victim's choices again complete speculation on my behalf but i just found it interesting that those two girls the parents are having or seemingly having a different journey let me know down below and i'll catch you all in the next one